Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Constant and we're back at it with another video of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today I'm going to be trying something different and making a tips video. This video is about an arcade game named Marine Rita that is in StarCraft 2. I used to play this game a lot before back in the day but I kind of stopped playing it because I started playing more multiplayer and more campaign. But then I got back into it and I realized a lot has changed. There's like new strategies, new things. So I wanted to make a tips video on people who are not as good. And maybe they can learn a thing or two on how to play this game mode. Because I play this game mode and I've had an ally who wasn't very good or I've had an enemy that wasn't really good. And sometimes that just doesn't make the game as fun. And I don't want to blame them because it's hard for them to learn. There's no video, there's no tips. There's nothing that they can watch or like try to play because a lot of people, a lot of people in StarCraft won't help you. They won't, if your ally is like good and you're bad, you won't be like, hey, you should do this. I'll probably like say something to you that won't be really nice, but that's usually what happens. That's why I want to make this tips video so people can get better at it and maybe learn a thing or two. I'm not the best, but I feel like I may know more than the average Joe. So let's get right into it. First, you want to start out, you want to select a mercenary. It doesn't really matter who you pick. I usually just pick Zerglings, but... Anyways, let's get right into it. Tip number one. Watchtowers and Vision. That is the most important thing in the game of Marine Arena. First, when you start out the game, you and your ally are going to want to break these rocks that you both have. Because that will get you to these watchtowers. Watchtowers are probably the biggest key in this game. You need all the vision that you can get, and the watchtowers will give you a lot of vision. Right now, since I'm like master control, I just added a bunch of AIs with me, but I have all the vision in the world. But when you play the game, the only vision you have is like up till here, like up almost, almost up to this arrow right here. But it's it's not much at all. And the watchtower will give you a lot more vision. So the watchtower, you put a link or like you put a unit there and it'll give you like vision all the way over here. So it's a lot. It helps you when like trying to figure out when the enemy's moving out or if they're trying to surround you or something of that sort. That's why vision is very key. It's one of the most important things because you can always sandwich your enemy like if, you're, if your army is like right here and your ally is towards the watchtower. The enemy has no idea where your ally is. They have no idea where you are. Their vision is only till here. And they'll be like, hey, I'm going to go take the middle because that's where I can probably get some money. Okay? And then you're like, oh, I see blues coming in. You see him because of the uh, watchtower that you have set up. And then you start pushing up like, oh, I'm going to push up on this guy. And he's like... Oh crap, I gotta back up. But you're already here with your second or your allies army and you're like, T you're done. You're gonna get sandwiched, boy. And then you just mop him. You get the juice, you juice in, get the juice, and then you juice out. It's as simple as ABC. Tip number two that I have is upgrading costs. So, I'm just gonna upgrade a bunch of these. Um, that should be good enough. So right now my upgrade costs 725 for my mercenaries to go to the next level. And each upgrade gives you a 10% boost. Okay. So I want to, these marines, I want to be, the marines I want to upgrade as well. Marines and mercenaries have different upgrades. So you can have to upgrade them both if you want to go for that style. But both upgrades do not stack together. Like I can have 20 attack for them and have zero. But each time you upgrade, for say, mercenaries, it also upgrades marines and heroes by 50%. So, it's like 5%, technically. So, if you want to upgrade your zerglings, but it's 725 is a lot, you just upgrade your marines twice. That's 225 plus 250, so 575. And you got the same thing, you upgrade them by 10%. And you upgraded them twice as well. So they both get upgrades. 
and it was cheaper for you. So sometimes you have to figure out which strategy is really the best on like, well it's not about strategies, like you want to use your brain more and you want to get the cheaper, you want to buy the cheaper one with the greater outcome. It's pretty simple, but sometimes in the heat of the game you might not realize that you get a large amount of cash and you'll spend 1k on upgrades when you can probably spend like 500 and get double that. Tip number three that I have is that you always usually want to get a mercenary. Mercenaries, like this is a merc compound. I may, I may have mis, uh, said it in the beginning. This is a merc compound. These are mercenary units. A mercenary elite is something like a battle cruiser or like a tank, overseer, raven. So I'm going to try to free up, free up some supply to get one because you need to free up supply to actually get one but let's send one of these guys over here and I, I just want a bunch of my units to die so I'm just gonna send them to his unmove command oops not this guy I send my units on move command but see now I have enough to actually get one of them but like I usually get a battle cruiser because it's the best out of all of them out of all the mercs oh I don't want to kill him oops but it's usually, I think it's usually the best because it ha also has a Yamato Cannon which does a lot of damage. Mine's pretty upgraded right now, that's why the Yamato Cannon is doing so much, but it usually doesn't do that much, but it still does a lot. And it's also very tanky, like, I'm gonna send all these units back, where's green? I'm gonna have him target my, off. Uh... I'm just gonna go after blue, and just show you how tanky it is. It also upgrades with your Merc Compound, which makes it very powerful. So, I'm going to go alone. Just look at this. Look how tanky this guy is. Ooh, I'm getting killed. Let me hit one Yamato cannon. Ooh, I'm dying. Let me repair. It's pretty simple. Oh, I'm dying. Let me run away. Like, it's very simple. Like, you can do a lot of damage. And, like, this is just a lone battle cruiser against, like, a bunch of marines. I, already, I got 52 kills. Just with a battle cruiser. Alone. Imagine that with an army. You'd be doing a lot more damage than that. And I'm not saying you only get the battle cruiser. You can get the raven. The raven is also very good with the secret missile. The auto turrets. Helps you gain vision and easily take down other things as well. You can do the mini thor. It helps stun with the barrage. And it's also really tanky. Tanker than a battle cruiser. So it just depends on what you're trying to, what your strategy is. But... Most of the time, you always want to get a Merc. The next tip is that you always want to get a Planetary by around, like, I'd say about 30 or so minutes. Here, let me try it on orange. Get a Planetary, and then let's get a Support Tower. The Support Tower is another key, but I'll explain that in a little bit. So, actually, actually I'll, just, I'll just explain the Support Tower first. So the support tower, or I should say the radar tower, is the initial thing. But for 100 minerals, which is really cheap, you can get another tower, which in the beginning can help you scan because you only have like 200 energy. It's like three scans. But with the radar tower, you get another 100 energy, which is an extra scan. And you can upgrade it into three variables. So you can either get the support tower, the anti-unit, or the anti-hero. I always get support because that's usually what I need. But if you're if your enemy is playing like a hyper aggressive, like a hyper aggressive style, and he keeps an attack, you might want to get the anti unit. With that, you get the scanner sweep, which is the scan, obviously. But you also get the cyanide storm. You get the secret missile. You get the force field. So you get a lot of abilities to help kill enemy units. But support tower, on the other hand. It lets you transfuse your units, it lets you recall them, drop marines, chrono boost, and it's just like the multiplayer, 50% faster for 20 seconds, and it only costs 50 energy, and you have 250 energy. That's more energy than your command center, imagine how many scans, you have like a never ending supply of scans. You also have a guardian shield to use when people are attacking you, and it's like, oh, people are ready my base, let me stand in the shield. Which is super good and fend off against other units. The other tip I was saying was the planetary. Let me uh, show you 
how good the planetary actually is. An orbital command only has 10,000 health. Planetary has double that. Like, if you just look at the value, you're getting 10,000 more health. And I'm not saying you get this right away. You get this like 20 minutes, 30 minutes into the game. And it's only cost 350 minerals. It, it attacks both ground and air. So you literally cannot be killed by like, oh, they're coming in with voids, I'm dead. But no, that's just not how it works. The, look at the range. The range is crazy. It's above that missile turret. Like if units are still attacking you from here, you probably have units spawning and you're probably killing them, but the planetary is still attacking you from a distance. So now let me show you. A lot of people what they like to do is they like to drop marines. If you're going for a heavy marine build, they'll be like, oh snap, I can just do this. I'm just going to drop like 15 marines right in your base and I'm going to target down your planetary. But you usually have units and units attacking as well, so it's not just your planetary. But look at how much your planetary is doing. Like my marines are like super powerful. And yet the planetary is still holding on. Like I wasted a lot of minerals throwing all those marines in. I think one marine costs like not one marine. One marine bundle costs 150. I probably shot like seven, eight pods in there. That's easily a thousand minerals. And what did I get? Nothing. I tried to go for his planetary, I got nothing. What did he get? At least like three, four hundred minerals for free. And the planetary automatically reheals itself. You can also get a medevac for like 250 minerals or 300 minerals. 300 minerals and it will heal your buildings. A medevac will heal your buildings. So it's, it's pretty crazy how many useful factors you can get. Like support tower mixed with planetary, mixed with like a medevac. Like, there's so many different strategies you could do and so many other things that will help you in the game that a lot of new people don't know of. Another tip that I want to give out is heroes. So, you can always get a hero. You can get them anytime. There's no, like, cap one time limit or anything. anything. But you can get a hero. You can get a commando, archon. I mean, uh, not archon. Dark Templar, high Templar. And high Templar, you know, storm, dark Templar. Cloaked unit slashes away commando. It's a ghost, but for a different cause, I say. Ghost in regular multiplayer is like. How do I phrase this? Ghost in regular multiplayer is like just to take down key units, like a high Templar, but it doesn't do much damage. A commando will easily take down a Colossus or a, a Zero Tool or Dark Archon, I should say. And. Another useful thing, not really a tip, is you do not want to get a hero against a commando. A commando will absolutely demolish anything you throw against it. He's literally meant to deal with heroes. There's a reason when you're playing online and you see commando, people just go army. Because when you go commando, you lose a lot of money and like going into your actual basic marine army or your merc army. That's why it's harder to make money with the commando unless you have people like that guy. Like I did that myself, but people get like Dark Templar. And it's like, okay, just watch how much damage it does. Where is the Dark Templar? I don't know where it is. I think I'm going to have to make a new one. Well, I'll just make a new one. But it's crazy how much it does. Like a commando, snipe does 300 damage to the target unit and it does 1200 damage to summoned like literally it will destroy so much in a single hit oops that's not my team you can cloak too we can okay i'm cloaking i'm out of here it's as simple as that i should make a task star thing i can't see it because zero two is a cloaked unit and i can't control the allies army like that but commando is known as a hero killer he will when you upgrade him enough you can evolve him to a specter and he can launch nukes, he can EMP, and he can just, he can do everything. He will take out a Dark Archon with a single shot. And Dark Archons gives you a thousand minerals. Like, you're feeding the player so much. Like, a thousand minerals is like, what? Two, three upgrades? And that is a lot. Like, if we're all at, like, 5,000 score, and your enemy automatically jumps up a thousand score because you killed his Archon... Or because he killed your Archon, he easily gets like two or three upgrades on you, and then he has the advantage, and he keeps on slowly and steadily building that advantage. Like, look at this commando. I can easily come in and snipe him. Look at the distance on that, too. 
I'm cloaked. He has no idea I'm there. And this is, this is a level one commando. Easily took down so much health, and I can just keep on going and trying to snipe him, kill him again. Boom. This is level one versus level one. Once you get a specter, you can one shot. Once you upgrade your commando, you can easily kill him. That's why you really don't want to go hero against a commando. And the last tip I want to put out today is communication. You always want to communicate with your ally because without your ally, you will most likely lose the game. Unless you're controlling both armies like I am right now, but then even then it's still really hard to do that. Your ally is the most imp important factor in your win. For say, orange and yellow are like, yeah, let's go for the middle, you know. This kind of relates to my vision, vision point, but it's different. And I'm like, okay, yo, pink, I want you to be on the flank. So if he retreats, you can easily cut off his retreat and take him down. But that also ties in with the vision because, oops, what's going on? It's, it's actually kind of hard to control these armies. These guys are in hold position. So I'm like, okay, let me go around. I'm going to go attack him. And he's like, oh no, I should run. Oh crap, this is not really working out well. Okay, and he's like, you're pushing up the ramp and Orange is like, oh no, I should be getting out of here. But then he runs into your allies army and you just destroy him. You get the juice and then you back out. Like this is two armies versus one or two armies versus two. But since you have the surround in the concave, you can easily take down a higher leveled army or a more powerful army that has more units. Like you can easily get these guys in a funnel. Like they're going to be attacking. I'm going to get them in a funnel. They don't know it, but he's literally in a funnel and you're easily as the other player. You're just destroying him. You have the massive concave. Or if you even if you don't, move back a little bit. You have such a nice concave there. And the commando. Easily throw down an EMP. Or a, a grenade. You're stunning them. Like, we had the same amount of units. But I easily destroyed all of the units that he had. There goes the Tassadar too easily. It's hard to control the Tassadar like that, but you guys get the point. When you're playing. You want to get the favorable engagement, and you want to get that concave of the surround. And to get that, you either need a good ally, who is naturally good, or you need communication. Like, not everyone is good. Sometimes all you have to do is, yo, meet up right here on the side, and we can flank pink that's on the high ground. It's, it's as simple as that, but it goes a long way. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If you guys leave a like and subscribe, I post daily or not daily. I try to post at least two or three times a week of content, but it's all meaningful. Like I plan on posting a couple Marine Arena strategy videos, like an actual me in gameplay playing so that people can get a feel for it and try it out for themselves. So let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment. Tell me what I should do next and I will see you guys in the next one.